You're blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. The persecution drives you even deeper into God's kingdom. And know that you are in good company. My prophets and witnesses have always gotten into this kind of trouble. So says Matthew 5. In 2018, Oscar Romero was named a saint by the Catholic Church. As the Archbishop of San Salvador for the last four years of his life, Romero was a strong public voice for the many voiceless and anonymous poor of El Salvador and Latin America. And when he preached in the cathedral on Sunday mornings, I'm told that the streets were empty and that all the radios were on full volume to hear truth and sanity in an insane and corrupt world. Here's a man who suffered with and for those who suffered. His loving heart shines through clearly in his homilies. He said, A gospel that doesn't take into account the rights of human beings, a Christianity that doesn't make a positive contribution to the history of the world, is not the authentic doctrine of Christ, but rather simply an instrument of power. We don't want to be a plaything of the worldly powers. Rather, we want to be a church that carries the authentic, courageous gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, even when it might become necessary to die like he did on a cross. In his homily on March the 23rd, 1980, the day before he was murdered, Romero addressed the Salvadorian military directly. He said to them, brothers, we are part of the same people. You are killing your own brother and sister peasants. And when you are faced with an order to kill given by a man, the law of God must prevail. The law that says, thou shalt not kill. No soldier is obliged to obey an order against the law of God. No one has to obey an immoral law. And it is time that you recover your consciences. In the name of God then, and in the name of this suffering people whose laments rise up to heaven each day, I plead with you, I pray with you, I order you in the name of God, stop the repression. The next day, following this sermon, a government hit squad shot him through his heart as he stood at the altar. Only a few weeks earlier, Romero had said these words. I have often been threatened with death. I must tell you as a Christian, I do not believe in death without resurrection. If I am killed, I shall arise in the Salvadorian people. I say so without boasting, with the greatest humility. A bishop will die, but God's church, which is the people, will never perish. Romero's epitaph reads, Sentir con la Iglesia, to be of one mind and heart with the Church. And these words were his Episcopal motto, his promise to share the suffering and strength of the people for whom he served. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Blessed be the Lord, I will bless the Lord at all times, His praise ever in my mouth, let my soul glory in the Lord. The cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Blessed be the Lord. Let the to their pleas and 
to hearts broken he is near for he hears the cry of the poor the Lord hears the cry of the poor blessed spirit crushed he will say will be ransom for their lives will be safe shelter for their fears for he hears the cry of the poor The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Blessed be the Lord. We proclaim the greatness of God. His praise. Every face brightened in his light, for he hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Blessed be. This is a prayer written by Bishop Ken and Tenair in 1979, known as the Oscar Romero Prayer. It helps now and then to step back and take a long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it is even beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a tiny fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete which is another way of saying that the kingdom always lies beyond us. No statement says all that could be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. No program accomplishes the church's mission. No set of goals and objectives includes everything. That is what we are about. We plant a seed that will one day grow. We water seeds already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces effects far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything, and there is a sense of liberation in realising that. This enables us to do something, and to do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. Amen.